Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to talk about my everyday carry, so stick around. About a year ago I posted two videos, one on a bug out bag and one on a get home bag. Now since then I've been bombarded with the same question over and over and over again. And it starts off with, bug out bags are cool, get home bags are awesome, but what do you carry every single day? What is your everyday carry or EDC? Well, today you're in luck. I'm gonna try and answer that question. Now for me, an EDC means just that. It's something I'm carrying every single day. So what I've done here is I've compiled a list of 10 items or 10 C's of survivability. And to me, those will be the core of every single kit that I create. Let's say I'm going to go to the Pathfinder School and teach for three to five days, or an overnight camping trip, or a weekend camping trip, or make a bug out bag or a get home bag. These items will be the core of every single kit, and they can function as a minimum kit. So that minimum kit becomes my EDC. So let's go ahead and talk about what I carry and why I carry it. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in and talk about cutting tools. Now, normally, if I'm out camping or I'm in the woods doing a day hike or an overnighter or simply teaching at the Pathfinder School, I want a full tang knife that's carbon steel, has a sharp 90 degree spine on the back with an overall blade length of minimum four inches. That's just my personal preference. But what I've noticed is certain states that I work in, mostly on the west coast or left coast, people seem to get intimidated if they see a knife on your hip or on your side or carrying one in general. So what I've done is I've scaled that down. I thought about it, what can I do to still carry a cutting tool? And my mindset is if they don't see it, then it can't intimidate or be harmful. And so what I've been carrying for the past four years is this Victor Knox Swiss Army knife, one-handed trekker. Now it's designed to be opened with your right-handed or left-handed. We have our saw and the common tools, screwdrivers, bottle openers, can openers. We have our tweezers on one side with the standard toothpick. Now what I've done, I've taken the toothpick out and upgraded it to a mini fire steel. Novelty, maybe, but does it work? Yes. And best of all, like I mentioned before, I can place it in my pocket and no one knows I have it. Now, in addition to my Victor Knox one-handed trekker or redundancy, I'm going to carry a saw. And this one happens to be a mini silky or a silky pocket boy. Just like the larger versions, it has medium-sized teeth and is designed to cut on the pull rather than the push. And a saw this size, you can still process two-inch diameter saplings and you'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and talk about combustion devices. Now for me, the primary go-to combustion device, first time, every time, is going to be a Bic lighter. And I'm going to carry three of these. One in my pocket and two in my pack. Or one in my pocket, one in my pack, and one in a day bag or haversack. Now for me, the Bic lighter is a go-to source because it operates when it's cold, wet, dry. Even when it's out of fluid, you'll still get spark. Now, there's a lot of controversy about these. All you got to do to warm them up, put it underneath your armpit, or in your pocket. Once it's warm, pull it out, you're good to go. If it gets wet, there's a small metal strap here at the top. It's spring loaded. Remove that with a pocket knife or a Leatherman. Blow into it several times. <laughs> Dry it out, and you should be good to go.
Now the next combustion device I want to talk about is a half inch diameter by six inch in length ferrocium rod. Now unlike a Bic lighter that guarantees you flame, the ferrocium rod will guarantee you spark and it works while it's wet. Taking the end of it, grab a one inch roll of Gorilla Brand duct tape, tape the end, give me a finger and thumb hold. I can take this using a 90 degree spine on my full tang knife or my saw on my Victor Knox one handed trekker. I can plant my ferrocium rod firmly on my foot or my knee, take the 90 degree spine or that saw, stick it against there and scrape it back, giving me spark over and over again. I guarantee you in your lifetime, you're probably never gonna make enough fires to use this up. Here we have our silky saw. There's a sharp spine here on the back. Got my ferrocium rod. And the last redundancy of a combustion device that I want to talk about is a magnifying lens or sun lens. This one happens to be an inch in diameter with a magnification power of six times. Now, the sun is a renewable resource, which means until the end of the world occurs and the machines take over and we have to darken the skies so they can't recharge their batteries, the sun's always gonna be there. So why not take advantage of it? Instead of using the fuel from my Bic lighter or scraping my ferro rod until it breaks. Talking about containers. For me, I'm looking for a stainless steel bottle with a wide mouth at a minimum of 32 ounces. This happens to be 38 ounces and it's a Nalgene bottle. It's four years old, has some minor dents here at the bottom. As you can see, it's been placed in the fire several times. I can cook in this or even disinfect water. Now the best part is I can combine this 38 ounce bottle with my 25 ounce nesting cup. Now, 32 ounces to a quart, that one's 38. I have an extra six ounces combined with my 25 ounces gives me 31 ounces. So in reality, I have almost two quarts of water available to me at any time. Now the nesting cup, I can make char cloth or char material inside this or even cook inside of it. But the feature I like the most is that here at the top, there's two holes. All you gotta do is grab a piece of paracord or bank line or even a piece of barbed wire from a fence and improvise a bale. I can hang it from a tripod over a fire and now I have a mini bush pot. Combine this with this and let's say a stainless steel spork and now I have a miniature cook set that can go anywhere. Moving on to an important part of the kit, the cordage. Now I carry two types of cordage. The first one I want to talk about is going to be bank line. I get the question a lot, what is bank line? Think of trot line for catfishing, except for it's been tarred. The tarring makes it water resistant and rot proof. It will last a long time. It's not going to stretch like paracord does. So any type of camp crafting or structures that I need to make or build, I'm going to this first time every time. Now this is a one pound roll. It's about 350 feet. And I believe the brake strength is around 340 pounds. Each one of these strands on here, there's actually three strands that make this individual piece. Each strand is number 12 bank line, has a brake strength of 100 pounds. Now, again, I mentioned this is a one pound roll. There's a smaller one that's offered. It's a 100 foot roll. It's about half the length and half the diameter. So the option is yours. The next one we going to talk about is paracord or 550 paracord. Inside the paracord, there's seven inner strands. Now, ideally the paracord would break at 550 pounds, but I've noticed around 250 to 300, it wants to stretch. So for me, a shelter ridge line is perfect with this type of setup. What you have right here is my pre-made ridge line. I have two prusik loops and a bullen and it's hanked up for easy storage. I can toss this into a pack and it's tangle free and it's there when I need it. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a link or a card right up here somewhere. Those of you that don't know how to make this setup, click on that card, it'll take you to my video and you can get her done. Now, when talking about cover, for me, this is one of the most important pieces of your kit. It's gonna help regulate your body's core temperature from conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, 
the military poncho, for me, anyways, it doesn't get much better than that. This thing is so versatile that it will make your head spin. I can take this, place it over my body, put the hood on, keeps me out of the wind, out of the rain. With it on my body, I can sit in front of a fire, I can lift it up, get that convective heat working around, all the way around my body, keeping me warm. Take that same poncho, combine it with a military poncho liner, and make an improvised sleep system. I've taken this poncho and actually made three different types of emergency shelters, lean-to, A-frame, and plow point. Exact same poncho, I turn it into two different types of improvised raised beds and even a hammock. Continuing to move forward, let's talk about our compass. For me, I carry a base plate style compass. This is a Sunto MC2. Now on this compass, we have a signal mirror as well as an additional magnifying lens or sun lens. Now, the sole purpose of a compass is to allow you to walk in a straight line. Walking that straight line will keep you from experiencing something called lateral drift. Now, lateral drift occurs when you veer off in your dominant leg or for some people, their non-dominant leg. And over a period of time, where you think you are, you end up somewhere else or walk in a circle and you become lost. Now combining a compass with ranger beads or pacing beads, you can walk in that straight line and keep track of the distance as you walk. Now, I currently have three land navigation videos from beginner all the way up through map reading. Go ahead and search those out. I also have a video on how to make your own ranger beads or pacing beads. So in case you don't know how to make these, why spend the money? Make your own. We're going to talk about our candling device or our headlamp. I chose a headlamp because I want to be hands-free. Say it's darkness falls and I have to go out there and do something or fix my shelter after the rainstorm, I want my hands to be free. Now this one happens to be a Princeton Tech. It's 120 lumen at the high beam, 80 lumen at low beam. It's got a red light on here for night vision as well as a strobe. Costs around $35. I want to carry something like this, which is 100% waterproof as well as extra batteries. Let's go ahead and talk about cargo tape or cloth tape. For this I've chosen a one inch roll of Gorilla Brand duct tape. Now we all know there's millions of uses for this. Let's just talk about a couple of them. The obvious ones will get out of the way. Gear repair, clothing repair. Got a hole in my tarp or my tent, patch it up, I'm good to go. Hole in my pants, I can stick it on there, done deal. Now, there's several other uses for this and some of them are actually medical. You can take your knife and trace out an hourglass shape and use it for an improvised butterfly bandage. You can actually go ahead and make improvised sutures with your bank line. You can use it to help keep a limb immobilized, say a broken arm. I can take the same tape, roll it into a ball, light on fire with my Bic lighter, and it was actually gonna burn for 30 seconds or more. I can even pull strips off here if I want to and make an improvised duct tape bird's nest that will actually be ignited by my ferro rod. So this right here is black gold, and I highly recommend you carry it. Next on our list we have cotton material. Right here I have two 2x2 two 100% two, cotton bandanas. Now I suggest getting 3x3s three or even one large samog. Now the benefit of having cotton material is that I can take a piece of this and tear it off use it with my nesting cup that I talked about earlier, or even my stainless steel container, cover the top, place it inside some coals, and create char cloth for my next fire. Also, I can take these bandanas and use them for medicinal purposes. I can make slings or improvise splints. I can do something as simple as place it into a cool stream, 
put around my neck to cool me down. The only limit with something like this is your imagination. The last item I want to talk about before we go into optional items is a cargo needle or sail needle. I always suggest carry number 10 or number 14. You want the needle large enough for gear repair but small enough for clothing repair. All you got to do is go ahead and combine this with your paracord ridge line. Cut off a good two foot. Inside there you have seven inner strands. Two times seven is what? 14. So you now have 14 feet of thread for your needle. I'm going to briefly talk about some additional items. They're not required or necessary, but they'll make your life a lot easier. The first one's going to be plastic ABS tent stakes. I'm going to carry four of these. Now, here's my methodology. The amount of stakes I'm going to need is determined by the type of shelter I'm going to put up. The type of shelter I'm going to put up is determined by what's going on. I need two stakes for a lean-to, I need three for a plow point, and I need four for an A-frame. Now, like I tell students all the time at the Pathfinder School, do you want to stand in a rainstorm or a thunderstorm and carve tent stakes, or do you already want to have them made? Now, let's say, for example, you're that good, you can locate that material, process that material, carve that material, and you can do it all in under one minute. Now it's times four. It's proven that in two minutes or less, you'll be soaking wet. Or your family, or your kids, etc., are going to be wet. Smart person is going to carry some stakes, and that's what I do. Now next on my list is going to be a two by two signal panel. I want to carry this for the obvious reasons. In my opinion, it should be a three by three. I can go to open field, I can wave it, I can signal for rescue. Now the other reason why I carry this is because I can make an improvised waypoint. Now a waypoint is simply a stopping point. Let's say I'm walking a known trail and I want to deviate from that trail to go do my number two or drop a deuce in the field. Well, let's say I'm on that azimuth or bearing and I look over and I see there's potential water source down that way. Do I want to deviate off my azimuth and no longer walk that straight line? Or do I want the ability to drop my gear, take out my orange cloth, my signal panel, hang it from a tree, and use it as a waypoint? So now, that gives me the freedom to roam the countryside in any direction, as far as I want to. As long as I can turn around and see that cloth, I can come back to my gear, put it on, continue down that trail, or pick up where I left off with my azimuth of bearing and walk that straight line. Now the last optional item I want to talk about is a good notebook. This happens to be a 5x7 right in the rain. I want to combine this with two right in the rain mechanical pencils. Now why carry a notebook? There's several reasons. I'm going to leave that up to you. But for me, one of the main reasons is so that I can document what I do, where I'm going, how far I'm going. If I find materials or resources in a certain location, I want to make a note of that. And approximately what the distance was from my base camp. Let's say I went out 500 meters and I found a place that's surrounded by cottonwoods. Go, wow, I can make bow drill for days right there. I want to make a note of that, 500 meters from my base camp. If I'm planning a route, I'm going to go out and explore for the day. Make a gigantic box. I want the azimuth and bearing to here, azimuth and bearing to here, azimuth and bearing to here, and then that way I can get my azimuth and bearing to here. So if I become lost somewhere, all I gotta do is look at it and go, oh, my reverse azimuth is 100. Dial out my compass and head back to my previous point or back to my camp. All this goes along with something called self-mapping or PAL, which is positive azimuth uniform layout. And I'll get to that in the future. Go back to a notebook, get a notebook that works for you. And for me, first time every time, it's right in the rain. Welcome back, that was good to go. Now you know what I carry and why I carry it. Let's talk about a couple of things. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, these 10 items can function as a minimum kit. However, they can be the core of any kit. All you have to do is scale it up or down to your liking. Now, everything we talked about can be found in Bushcraft 101, and all the gear displayed in this video can be found on my Amazon Influencer page. All you gotta do is go there, click on it, and check it out.
Now do me a favor, hit that subscribe and like button, ring that notification bell, and as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.